Hello everyone and welcome back to the next part in our match tutorial series. In this part we're going to be taking a look at creating the removal and replacement of new potions. There's going to be maybe one or two sections here where we're not actually going to have anything to show for it, but ultimately what we'll be doing is when this match happens, we're going to be deleting this series of potions. We're then going to be cascading each of the potions down, so this green one will end up down here, blue one ends up here, white one ends up here, and then we're going to be spawning in potions above and then having them slide down. And that gives you that nice slide cascade effect that you'll see in many of your match three games. Now the logic for this one will get a bit confusing on the way. So I'm intentionally breaking this out into multiple weeks so that you have a little bit of time for this to sink in. Obviously, if you're watching this in the future, you can just watch them back to back, but it gives time for that logic to sink in and also even potentially for you to give it a try yourself and see if we come up with anything different. Okay, so let's jump into it. I'm going to open up my potion board script. Okay, so over here in the code, I've created a region for our matching logic and we're gonna create another one that we'll call cascading potions and we'll end that region here. And inside of this region, we're gonna be using a few methods. The first one is going to be remove and refill, and that's gonna take in a list of potions. This is gonna be our entry point into cascading potions, and it's actually gonna get called inside of our check board method. So once we check our board, we know we have our matches, we want to now actually remove and refill. We'll have that remove and refill get called here, and we'll be passing in our list of potions there. The next thing that we're gonna create is a refill potions method. That's just because this being a parent method just has a bit too much logic in it and we want to isolate those concepts. So we have this refill potions, then we have a spawn potion at top, and this is used to spawn potions just above the board and then create that cascading effect where we're filling in the blanks. And in order to determine the blanks, we're gonna need one helper method and that's gonna be called find index of lowest null. And the null that we're referring to here is just when we've created an empty space on the potion board, we wanna find the lowest one in that row so that when we refill it, we refill from there up. So it looks like gravity is pulling all these potions down. There's one other change that we'll make in here for now. It will also get changed again in future, and this will be a breaking change until we finish the code, but it will be adding a bull here that we're gonna call take action. And the reason why we're adding this is because we have multiple points where we're doing this checkboard to return a true false. We don't want to be clearing out potions every single time that happens and then calling this refill and, and so on. So what we're gonna do instead is have this if take action, then we're gonna call that remove and refill method. And that's gonna take in our potions to remove and we can create that method now. So I'll hit Alt Enter, we'll generate the method I'm just gonna remove that note that we had there. Okay, so we'll start by removing the potion and clearing the board at that location. So when we're saying clearing the board, we're talking about the potion board that we have here. And that will be a for each potion of type potion in potions to remove. Oh, I normally have a underscore here, so we'll keep that there. We'll start by getting its X and Y indices and storing them temporarily. So that'll be an int x index equals potion dot x index. The same for the y index. Then we can destroy the potion. So we'll say destroy potion dot game object. That's gonna get rid of the potion class as well. And at the time it will create a missing on the potion board. So we immediately wanna create a new space on that potion board. So we'll create a blank node on the potion board and that node is gonna have a null potion on it. So we're gonna know that that's something that needs to be filled later. So we'll say potion board at our X index and our Y index is equal to a new node. It's true because it's a usable space and it's null because we haven't got a potion to fill it in with yet. So this process is gonna go ahead and delete all of the potions on the board for us that we have considered as matches. Now we need a process to refill that. And the way we're gonna do that is by looping through all of the potions that we've got, finding if they're null, and then starting that refill process. So the way we've looped through our board before is we loop through our x, then our y, so we'll do that again. So we'll say for int x equals zero, x is less than width x plus plus, and then for int y equals zero, y is less than height y plus plus. So when we get down to here, we're going to call just a, a debug.log and we'll say the location x plus x 
plus y plus y is empty, attempting to refill it. So this is just the x and y location, and then we're going to call refill potion, and we're going to pass in x and y, and that's the x and y in this loop that we've got. So that method obviously doesn't exist just yet, so we'll create that now. I'll remove my note in there. And now the way that we're going to do this from a logical standpoint, I think is easier to demonstrate through here. So let's say, for example, that I had three red potions that came into a vertical line here. So I've got this match here. Now I've written the code here to remove all three of these potions and I've created a blank null potion space on the board, but none of these are naturally just going to fall down. We need to tell it to fall down. And we can't just tell everything to move down one because we've moved three out of this row, so we need to move down three. And that might change. It might be one, it might be four, it might be five, depending on the type of match that you've made. So we need to basically just have it calculate whether it needs to keep moving down. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna start with this potion here. We're going to work out whether the potion above us is null. And if the potion above us is null, we're then going to jump again until we find either the top of the board or the next potion that's not null. And then once we have that potion, we can then work our way back down with that potion to fill it in. And if we're at the very top of the board and there's no potions, let's say I made these three match and there's no potions, well then I have no potions and I'm at the top of the board, so let's spawn a potion all the way up here and have it slide down to the correct location. So the way we're going to do that is by using a y offset. So that's going to just be int y offset is equal to 1. And then we're going to say while the cell above our current cell is null and we're below the height of the board. So as long as we're still inside of the board and the cell above us is null, then we want to increment our y offset. So we're looking to find how many spaces it is between us and the top of the board. So I'll say while y plus y offset is less than height and potion board x y plus y offset dot potion is equal to null. Then all we want to do is increment y offset. And I might put a debug dot log in here. I made it a bit long, but basically the potion above me is null. I'm not at the top of the board yet. So I'm going to increment my y offset and try again. My current y offset is whatever it is, and I'm about to add one to it. And then we'll just say after that, y offset plus plus. And then because we're inside of a while loop, this is going to keep incrementing until we either hit a potion or we hit the top of the board. So we can say we've either hit the top of the board or we found a potion. So let's see which condition we hit. And we can actually do that by just grabbing this same logic here. And instead we're gonna say is not null. So we're testing for the assumption that we're still inside of the board and the potion is not null. So we've hit a potion in this case. Then what we want to do is basically update the potion in that position to the position of our empty potion slot, which will update it on the potion board. And then we need to physically move it from location A to location B. So we can do that by saying potion and I'll just call that potion above because it's somewhere on the Y axis above our current potion. And we'll say potion board x y plus y offset dot potion dot get component of type potion. So now we've got the current potion here. We're going to need to move it to the correct location. We'll do that by grabbing its current vector location. So we'll say vector three target pos equals new vector three x minus spacing x comma y minus spacing y and then we just need to get a z location so we'll just take the one from the potion might add in another debug.log statement here again i've gone ahead and just filled this one out for us but all i've said is i found a potion when i'm refilling the board and it's at this location that will give us the x and y axis and i am planning to move it to this location so we'll know where it's going to go i also realize here i need to put transform.position.z and now that we've created our target position, we'll say move to location. So that's going to be potion above dot move to target because we've already used that a few times and it's quite useful to move it to the new location. So it's going to go from where it is above and then it's going to move all the way down to its correct location. We'll update our indices here. So the potions now move to the new location. We need the potion 
to know that it's in the new location, it's X and Y. And then we also need to set our potion board. So we'll start with the potion. We'll say potion above dot set indices. And we're gonna set it to the X and Y that it just moved to. And then we update our potion board. That will be potion board X, Y is equal to potion board X, Y plus Y offset. So we're just taking the exact one that's in there and marking it in the new location. And then finally, because we've moved one to the other location, we need to set the original position of this to null. So we're creating a brand new null above us because we're sliding that potion down. So we'll say new node. We've got a true again because it is still usable and we'll pass in null here. And we'll just add a comment here to say, set the location the potion came from to null. That's so that when you're looping through this whole process, the next time it runs through, it's able to catch that this one's now null and then move the next potion down. And we just keep looping until we've basically filled up the entire board. So now we've handled a scenario where we keep looping until we get to the top of the board, but we've only actually dealt with the case where we find a potion, not where we've hit the top of the board. So let's say if we've hit the top of the board without finding a potion, then we wanna say if y plus y offset equals the height, debug.log, I've reached the top of the board without finding a potion. And then we're going to use this spawn potion at top, and that's going to pass in X. Now we're going to stop this week here because we're at a good probably halfway point for some of the logic. So let's reflect on what we've done so far. We've basically got this refill potion logic that's going to get called inside of our check board, but only when take action is true. And when we remove and refill, we loop through each of our potions, we grab the indexes of them and destroy the potion, then create a blank space on the board. We then loop through each of the pages of our board and I just realized here I've made a mistake. So we need to add in the check to make sure that we actually have a null potion at this location. So we'll say if potion board x, y dot potion is equal to null. So we only want to do this in the scenario that we actually have a null potion because otherwise we would be attempting to do this for every cell on the board. But if we loop through our board and we have found a null potion in this location, then we want to go ahead and try and refill our potion. In our refill potion, we start with an offset and we loop through from the y through the y offset until we eventually find either a potion that isn't null or we reach the top of the board. And until we do that, we keep adding one to the Y offset. And once we break out of this while, we check to see, did we either reach the top of the board or in this case, have we found a potion? If we found a potion, then we wanna go ahead and find the target position that we want our potion to move to. We then move our potion to that location. We update that potion's indices. We then update the potion board with the new information. And then we take the original location of that potion and we set its new node to null. So we create a blank space there. We have another scenario here, which is if we get to the top of the board without finding a potion, and that's when your Y plus Y offset equals the height of our board, then we want to go ahead and spawn a potion at the top. And then we'll tackle this as well as the find lowest index in the next tutorial. Thank you everyone. I will see you guys in the next one. As always, these videos wouldn't be possible without the support of my Patreon members. In the silver tier, we have Lanky Moose, Castle Coders, and Zope. And we also have two new members this month, Sunday Roast and Jim Hawkins with Halloumi. Your continued support is truly appreciated. If you'd like to sign up, it's patreon.com slash and I will see you guys in the next video.